this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about amlodipine, particularly what it does to the body and about specific side effects. This is especially important if you're about to start amlodipine or you're already established on it. I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions in my clinics, such as how long does it take to work? Why are my ankles or gums swollen? Why have I started to feel more tired and sleepy? Can I help lower my blood pressure naturally? These are really important questions that you should be fully informed about when making a decision about taking any medication. This video will help you to understand more about amlodipine and allow you to make a logical decision about taking it. So let's get started. So what is amlodipine and how does it work? Amlodipine is a type of medicine called a calcium channel blocker. The generic name is called amlodipine, but it is most commonly known by its brand name, which is Norvasc in the US and Istin in the UK. It works by relaxing and widening the blood vessels. It does this by blocking calcium going into the muscles in the heart and blood vessels. Muscles need calcium to contract, so when you block the calcium, it makes the muscle cells relax. This lowers your blood pressure and makes it easier for your heart to pump blood around your body. In angina, amlodipine works by improving the blood and oxygen supply to your heart. Angina is a chest pain that comes on when not enough blood gets to the muscles of the heart. This usually happens because the arteries going to the heart become hardened and narrowed. So what is high blood pressure? Blood pressure is recorded with two numbers. The systolic pressure, the higher number, is the force at which your heart pumps blood around your body. The diastolic pressure, the lower number, is the resistance to the blood flow in the blood vessels between heartbeats when your blood is pumped around your heart. They're both measured in millimeters of mercury. As a general guide, high blood pressure is considered to be from 140 over 90 or more if your reading was taken in a healthcare setting or a doctor's clinic. Ideal blood pressure, if you are under 80 years old, is usually considered to be between 90 over 60 and 120 over 80. Everyone's blood pressure will be slightly different. What's considered low or high for you may be normal for someone else. So what could increase your risk of getting high blood pressure? It's not always clear what causes high blood pressure, but there are things that can increase your risk. You might be more at risk if you are overweight, eat too much salt from processed foods, or do not eat enough fruit and vegetables. You do not do enough physical activity. You drink too much alcohol or coffee or other caffeine-based drinks. You smoke, have a lot of stress, are over 65 years old, have a relative with high blood pressure, are of black African or black Caribbean descent, or sometimes it is caused by an underlying health condition or taking a certain medicine. So who can and cannot take it? Most adults and children aged six and over can take amlodipine. However, amlodipine is not suitable for everyone. To make sure it's safe for you, tell your doctor if you have ever had an allergic reaction to amlodipine or any other medicine, have liver or kidney disease, have heart failure or if you have recently had a heart attack. How and when do you take it? Amlodipine comes as 5 mg and 10 mg tablets and a liquid formulation. The usual starting dose of amlodipine is 5 mg once a day. Doses may be lower for children. Your healthcare provider should monitor your blood pressure to make sure it's not too high or too low. If the starting dose is not working well enough, for example, your blood pressure does not get any lower or your angina is not controlled, your dose may need to be increased to 10 milligrams. So how do you take it? You'll usually take amlodipine once a day. You can take it at any time of the day, but try to make sure it's around the same time every day. You can take amlodipine tablets and liquid with or without food. Swallow amlodipine tablets whole and have a drink of water with both the tablets and the liquid. So what are the common side effects? Your healthcare provider should ask you about any side effects you might be getting from the medicine, although not everyone gets them. 
the common side effects of amlodipine include headaches, feeling dizzy, a pounding heartbeat, flushing, abdominal pain, nausea, ankle swelling, and feeling tired or sleepy. There are also serious side effects after taking amlodipine that are rare, but call a doctor or emergency services if you have stomach problems or severe pain in your stomach, with or without diarrhea, whether it has blood in it or not, whether you're feeling sick and being sick, these can be signs of pancreatitis. Or if the whites of your eyes turn yellow or your skin turns yellow, although this may be less obvious on brown or black skin, this can be a sign of liver problems. Or if you have a serious allergic reaction to amlodipine, there may be a rash that's swollen or raised, itchy, blistered or peeling. These can be signs of an allergic reaction that may need immediate treatment in hospital. These are not all the side effects of amlodipine, so for a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicine packet. So does amlodipine interact with any food or other medication? Do not take amlodipine with grapefruit juice. Having large amounts of grapefruit or grapefruit juice can increase how much amlodipine is in your body and make side effects worse. If you are affected, you may have to avoid eating grapefruit or drinking grapefruit juice while taking amlodipine. So can you drink alcohol? Yes, you can drink alcohol with amlodipine, but it can make amlodipine lower your blood pressure more than you need. This can make you feel sleepy or dizzy or bring on a headache. If this happens to you, it's best to stop drinking alcohol while you're taking amlodipine. If you take other medicines that lower blood pressure, such as Ramapril or Lisinopril, at the same time as amlodipine, the combination can sometimes lower your blood pressure too much. When your blood pressure is low, you may feel dizzy or faint. If this keeps happening to you, tell your doctor as your dose may need to be changed. Some medicines can affect the way amlodipine works. So tell your doctor if you're taking any of these medicines before you start taking amlodipine. The cholesterol lowering medicine called simvastatin and if you're taking more than 20 milligrams a day. Antibiotics such as clarithromycin, erythromycin or rifampicin. Calcium channel blockers like diltiazem or verapamil. Antifungal medicines like itraconazole or ketoconazole medicines to treat HIV or hepatitis C virus, anti-epilepsy medicines such as carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital or primidone, medicines to suppress your immune system such as cyclosporin or tacrolimus. So some frequently asked questions in my clinic are, how long does it take to work? Amlodipine starts to work on the day you start taking it, but in some people it may be up to two to four weeks before it takes full effect. Another question I am asked is why are my ankles and gums swollen? And why have I started to feel more tired and sleepy? These are all known side effects of amlodipine and are listed in the manufacturer's leaflet. They occur due to the medication causing the blood vessels to dilate or widen. And as a result, the blood vessels muscular walls relax which enhances blood flow to those areas. The ankle and gum swelling is a result of fluid accumulation to those tissues. Some side effects may improve with time, but if they persist or become bothersome, speak to your healthcare provider who may adjust your dosage or consider an alternative treatment. And lastly, I'm asked, how can I help to lower my blood pressure naturally? I will go through this in more detail in another video, but you can boost your heart health and make some key lifestyle changes that will help your blood pressure and angina. So start today by making dietary changes, quitting smoking, lessen your alcohol intake, reduce your stress levels, get better sleep, manage your weight, get regular sunlight, correct your balance of sodium potassium intake, keep your body's insulin low, increase physical activity, look at breathing techniques such as breathing through your nose rather than your mouth, and lastly, supplementation with micronutrients. I will provide some useful links for referencing below. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button 
and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see new videos that are posted every week. Hit the notification bell if you want to get notified about new videos and please make a comment in the comment section to tell me what you enjoyed about this video or what topics you'd like to learn more about. You can also check out my other videos. One is on red yeast rice and how to lower your cholesterol naturally.